This is a fairly intensive project for me. On my mill drill, I want to replace the spindle bearings. Actually, the spindle and the drive sleeve bearings. So this is, would require a complete teardown of the upper end, um, removing all the gearing, and we'll see how that goes. The spindle bearings are just generating too much heat. I think they're definitely on their way out. Measuring runout, it's about a thousandth of an inch. That shouldn't be an issue. Um, I expect to maintain that once it's all done and put back together. But the, the heat issue is what's concerning me. That's what's driving this project. Well, the plan of attack here is to try to make sense of these instructions. So this is the, the manual that came with it. Uh, looks like the first order of business is remove that spindle lock nut. And that will, that will attach to the spindle taper sleeve and from there that should open up this whole section. So the quill is, it's got a cross lock here and it has a spring return and I'm going to figure that out once I get this cover off to see how that interacts. But once, getting the, getting the quill out isn't the big deal and the spindle itself, it's pressing those bearings out and then replacing them in both the quill and the spindle, I think these, so these bearings here and these bearings here for the quill itself. That's our objective. I think it's very important to note at this point that I am definitely not an expert with this. This is the first time I've attempted to take apart a mill drill. So I am certainly learning as I go along. That's not really a bad thing. It's not a way. It's, it's a good thing to test your limits. But you're watching things as it happens and as I make mistakes. So like this whole thing with the, with the pulley, trying to pull the, uh, trying to pull the, the pulleys off. I think that was um, the wrong way to go about it. Got some big ass wrenches. We're gonna to try to take this thing apart now. See if we can do here. Uh oh. Um, I should lock up the quill. There we go. So I've got this guy, so the quill is locked. I'm gonna start taking off this cap and that should be able to access. I don't think I need to take off the whole wheelie guy, but we'll see when I get in there. So we shall continue. guy is spring loaded but I see a tab here obviously but you see how okay that's not that's not budging at all. Um, Alright let's take off this side. And the wigger key off the fence as well. This guy, but I think this bolt only. No, I think I'm handling it hard, but I think this guy only rides in the slot here in the quill and keeps it from rotating. Yeah, maybe we should take this thing off as well. It will have to come off. I don't know if I can do that right away. But I thought this cover would come off, but it's not quite the case. It's on the Allen wrench here. It's interesting. There's one on this side as well. All right, more looking at the uh, exploded view. See what I can see. I don't think these little, little micro Allen wrenches are doing anything. Um, just see what happens. Okay, I see. So in this, I think I've got to, that's what these screws are. Okay, so these have teeth, obviously, so there's the, the coil has a hole in the end of it, and that goes over the top of the screw with the top of that worm gear. You know, I'm a 
can't tear by hand, but it's got a screw there which holds the end of this. So I think as you put it back together, you you probably run the screw through the end of the spring on there and then wind this up by hand and then use the little Allen wrenches that are here and here to hold this outer cover in the lock position you want it to. That gives you the proper spring tension because as you saw, the wheel dropped. Okay, we're making progress. I like it. I think at some point I, un I loosened up this quill and it should have remained tight because I was doing that last operation. But what are you going to do? Not, this it seems like it's not the right screw. This is probably a replacement. This is a countersink. It really should be a should be a round head, I would think. So we'll look at that. So the next part is we've got three screws which cover the plate. Let's just see what happens here. Let's take those guys off. This guy to the woodruff key locks those two and then you roll it through with the wheel. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. This looks like honest wear on these on these teeth here. Not too bad. This is pretty grody. I'll have to clean that up before it all goes goes back. So from this point, um, I can probably raise the entire head up and drop this quill right out. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll do that next. This is all loose. Let's see what happens. Ah, that's that guy. Let's take that guy apart. So any kind of junk, dust, and all that from anything uh, machining can get right into that bearing. That's probably why it's dyed. So 
There's that guy, and uh, looks like there's a cover plate. I see three screw ports here, and then I could probably get to the lower bearing, but we can take a look at that on the bench later. So this goes off. I think that's it for today.